It's March 17, 2016, and I wanted to address a topic somebody asked me about, and that was, how is an earning session different from a regular trading session? And this is a great question, and now's a good time to go over this because it's a month away from earnings, so in a few weeks, you know, we're going to start talking about this stuff all the time. And the way we're going to go over it, as always, we have the benefit of film from previous trading days historically. And there's a couple characteristics. I'm going to show you four different trades here, all on different stocks that we trade on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. And we're just going to talk about some of those characteristics and how they differ from a normal trading day. So the first footage you're going to see is back from July 17th back last summer in 2015 and this is going to be a trade that I made on Google on this day and the first characteristic you're going to notice July 17th, as I set this up is the fact that on earnings days stocks tend to gap they tend to have big gaps and you can see on this day, Google had a 13% gap. It was up 82 points. So that's the first characteristic that tends to be pretty consistent. For the most part, you get big moves than we're usually used to. A big gap on a normal day might be 1% or 2%. 2% would be a really, bad, really big gap up for Google in a normal trading day. On an earnings day, though, Google historically will gap up or down four to five percent on this day it made a monstrous gap of 13 percent so way more than usual and what I look for on a gap of that size in a stock like Google is I never rush in right away I always kind of let it play out and do its thing because for me I think it's pretty impossible to know just how the stock's going to trade after a 13% gap up. Sometimes you get a big move back down, other times you get a big move back uh, to higher prices, other times you just don't do anything. So what you'll notice about this is if you look in the lower right hand corner you can see that it's 9.57 so it's 27 minutes into the day and this is when you know I've observed 30 minutes worth of price action and now I can feel more confident about the setup in Google. I have some reference points to trade against. So it becomes at this point just like any other day. My opening price, my current high, my current low, the previous 15 minute high, the previous 15 minute low, all that stuff that sets up trades that you hear me talking about every day, we still want to apply it to earnings. So I'm going to click play here and talk about some of the things that are playing out. And the next characteristic that you will notice is the speed. Look how fast the level 2 is. Look how fast the order flow is on Google. We've got trades going through every second here on Google just about. And what I would point out is that there have been 4 million shares traded the first 27 minutes of the day on Google. Google hasn't traded 4 million shares in a normal day this entire month of March. The highest day Google's seen all year, in fact, was 6.5 million shares back in early February, and that was when the market was crashing. So the fact that you see Google trade all this volume 4.3 million shares you know the first 28 minutes of the day is consistent with an earnings day you're gonna have super high volume on earnings days so the speed is gonna be a lot faster that means your entries have to be a lot crisper because if you're wrong the stock could get away from you in a hurry so characteristic so far is the big gap and then the speed those are the two main things that you will see. Now here, I'm watching Google, and I've observed that it's kind of 
held above the opening price all morning or all 30 minutes so far of the opening and that's a positive sign in my eyes because we had a really big gap higher and it's holding all of those gains so far so over the next couple minutes you're gonna see me start to look at a long trade via these 695 strike calls on Google that are currently 250 by 265 notice you can't see it that clearly because it's a little blurry over here but notice this consolidation Google's been in and now it's starting to hold 685 which is just one of those five dollar round level points and my expectation because of the speed because of the fact it's been able to make a big move my expectation is that if it makes a new high it should be able to really keep on going I have the sense generally when I trade on earnings days that volatility brings more volatility so a 13 and a half 14 percent move in Google is a very volatile move in the stock and so my expectation is that if it gets to a new high there should be able to be some type of volatile continuation move to the upside because of the move it's already been able to do my thought process is hey if it moved 14 percent in the gap what's going to stop it from moving another 1% on an intraday and a 1% move from here is going to be six dollars and eighty five cents we're going to be in the six nineties so now look how deep this bid stack is here in the six eighty fives look at that you starting to hold six eighty fives I paused it for a second you've got five bids basically at eighty five fifty seven and then a couple more at 85.50, 85.54. So a lot of bid stacking and the speed continues to be good. This is where I start to think that she's getting ready to break out. So I hover my mouse over the buy to open button on the 695 strike call. I'm placing a bid at $2.55. You can see it highlighted in gray here. And now this right here, once it starts to come within striking distance of the high and these bids aren't coming back below 85, that's my signal to kind of chase a little bit and be more aggressive so that's why I take a position right there at two dollars and seventy cents you can see it highlighted and again it's a little blurry but in this chart you can see kind of this sideways action that it's starting to poke its head above starting to make a new 15 minute high I love when a stock gaps up very strong and then goes sideways and starts breaking out of that channel to the upside and doesn't come back down that tells me it's looking like a clean breakout so I'm in a position at two dollars and seventy cents and just look at this level two I mean the speed continues to be great and the stacking you know the bids continue to be extremely aggressive here in the 86's pay attention to when it does try to go down how the bids always come back up there here it is right here tries to come down to 86 bid stack at 8630 down close to 86 so it's trying to come down right here and you're gonna see these bids jump right back up towards 87 notice that we don't get any asks below 86 on that test boom look at that right back up to 87 by the bids huge upticks bid stacking at 86.90 now we're 87.20s 87.40s I mean that's major you're coming right up toward the high now so I loved that when I saw that I remember this trade and just an awesome awesome bounce right there and you know keep in mind it's only two points but look how quickly it moved two points if you look at Google today Google was in a two-point range for an hour today on March 17th 2016 on an earnings day though Google's moving two points every 
every 60 seconds in some cases. I just want to show that one more time because I felt that that is very good level 2 action to observe. You try to come down on top of 86, we don't get any asks below 86, and then the bid's right back up to 86.90 with the snap of a finger. And now they're just kind of off to the races. So now at this point I feel like I'm in the driver's seat on the trade. And this brings me to the final characteristic. We've talked about speed and volatility. We've talked about gap and how that, excuse me, how that relates to volatility. And now finally, we're going to talk about follow through. So we've consolidated the first 33 minutes of the day. Now we're going to make a new high. When you make a new high, I need to see follow through. I need that high to actually mean something. I don't want to make a new high and then just come right back down because then that's a sign that there isn't going to be that great of continued upside action. So let's see what this high a day test looks like on Google. And I'm still in that 695 call at $2.70. It's 310 by 340. I think I sell it for 350 or so into the new high. So here's the high of day test. You get above 89. Look at that bid stack again. Great stack above 89 right away. Right up to 90. Six nineties around level. I believe I place a sell order into this. Yep. Crossing 690, just great follow through right there. I'm still in. I still don't have a sell order in. Let's see where I end up placing this thing. I better go on at 420 because that's a nice gain if I can get it. All right, I place an ask at $4. Do I place my ask here? You know, I'm thinking of selling here because it's at that round level, 690. It, it's made a really nice move. I mean, those calls went from 270 to 420 with the stock only going higher by five points from 85 to 90. And again, the key is that there was follow through. We got above that high and we just kept on going. One thing that annoys me in watching this is I don't have a sell order in here. And I'm not saying I need to be selling it right here, but I should at least be doing something. I should either be placing a trailing stop or, or placing a ask at 450 or something. Placing an order instead of just playing it by ear, so to say. But at any rate, it's testing 91. It's a great high a day move. So now when I see that type of move, now I'm interested in Google later in the day. And I guess I did end up selling at $4.20. But I'm interested in Google throughout the morning now because it held the gap. It has shown excellent speed this morning. And when it broke out, it followed through to the upside. It followed through to the upside. There was great follow through. So that was the first clip I wanted to show. Next we're going to look at Amazon's price action on earnings from August, uh, sorry, January 19th. And this is going to be different on Amazon. Google was a big gap higher. This is a big gap lower on Amazon that we're going to look at. So paused it here for a second to set this up. This is right at Amazon's open. And you can see here, stock is down 10%. It's down 65 points. So again, we have that characteristic of a big gap. We talked about that with the Google trade. You need to understand that on earnings days, you're always more than likely going to have a big gap 
Maybe it's not going to be 10%, but it's going to be bigger than an everyday gap where maybe we usually gap up half of a percent or 1%. Stocks are going to be gapping 2, 3, 4%. In extreme cases, like in Amazon on this day, you're gapping down 10%. So again, I don't like trading right at the open on earnings days. I just think it's difficult. You can do it, but I think it's difficult. What we're going to see here on Amazon is a trade that I don't make but you could have made this is what I always talk about during my live trading sessions aggressive versus conservative or somewhere in the middle I sit out the first few minutes of the day and what you're gonna see on Amazon is a big-time defense at this round 570 level and I want you to see how the stock reacts so we open at 570 right away it's jumping up 571s 572s so this is where if somebody wanted to be extremely aggressive maybe they're trying to bounce Amazon versus that 570 level and notice how the stock just kind of takes off to the upside right away up to 75 just about now you try and dip a little bit again the speed and again the volume talked about the gap characteristic now we talk about the speed and the volume characteristic we are 60 seconds into the day and if you can see in the corner Amazon has traded 1.1 million shares the first 60 seconds of the day as we come up on 75 that's a whole lot of volume Amazon today in an entire day traded six million shares yesterday Amazon traded four million shares so here we are the first 60 seconds we've already traded a million shares you only see stuff like that on earnings days for the most part and it speaks to that point that if you're gonna trade the open you better get it right because if you get it wrong the trade could go against you in a hurry one of the things I like about my execution here or lack of attacking I should say is I am watching these 555 puts for a short versus 575 you can see I've got an order kinda of getting ready to queue it up here at a dollar and seventy cents got the mouse over the buy to open button to get in on a put but I wait I wait to see how it handles 75 before saying that I want to short it and what ends up happening is that right there she blasts through 75 so just again another example of why I usually don't attack the first three four five minutes of the day on an earnings day because it's just kind of too unpredictable you think maybe it's gonna stall at 75 and not only does it not stall at 75 it just blasts blasts through 75 straight to 77's so I want to just show that again because check this out this 555 put is two bucks by 206 okay watch what happens to it on just a little two dollar spike in the stock Here comes a spike above 75 and within 25 seconds those puts now that were just two dollars by 205 are now one dollar by 164 so that's why I personally prefer to wait now of course the call side you know had I been looking at the calls the calls are moving just as fast to the upside but again it's that 50 50 scenario you got to get it right I didn't get it right I didn't get it wrong I just sat on the sidelines but I waited to see how it handled 75 and I think one of the things with earnings is it's so important more than the average day 
to really be sure about yourself because if you're wrong you will not be able to manage that loss properly or if you do manage it properly it's still going to be a 30 40 percent loss whereas on a average day we're only going to have a 10 to 15 percent loss when we're wrong so look how quickly those puts kind of went to crap on us and now Amazon's just kind of off to the races now I'm going to fast forward a little bit and show you where we're at now so it's 932 and I'm fast forwarding to 937 look at this up to 585 so calls have really moved tremendously in this situation you know I definitely missed a trade opportunity by not going long but that's my personal approach not to be overly aggressive this does show the benefit of being aggressive on an earnings day though because if you get on that correct side of the trade off the open these are the types of moves that are possible Amazon from 570 to 585 and it's only 938 eight minutes into the day Amazon has moved 15 points Amazon is not moving 15 points the first eight minutes of a day unless earnings are out that's just not the way it works on an on an average day so now at this point as Amazon starts to come up towards 590 I'm going to start considering a potential short trade. Still going up 86s. And the reason I choose 590 is number one, it's a round level. And number two, it's in line or around the low from the previous day. The low from the previous day was in the mid 590s. So to me, Amazon has gone kind of straight up here. My experience tells me that nothing goes straight up without coming back down. And the question becomes, well, does it go straight up to 590 or does it go straight up to 600 or 605? You know, when do you make that short off of a straight up type move well the action lies in the level two it lies in the level two price action and we just got a signal right there of some exhaustion did you see that I'll rewind it we're testing highs printing 87s we're gonna start printing 88s and then within seconds we come right back down into the 87s into the 86s all the way back down 85 here we are in the 88s back down 87 below 87 and now printing 86s well about to be printing 86s so here you are now printing 86s now you're printing 85s now you're printing 84s that happened within a span of 35 seconds so when I see that hard move off the high that now gives me a sign that okay sellers are finally stepping in here and getting getting control of this thing a little bit because let's not forget the stock is still down 8% so the bulls are winning the battle since the open but the bears are still winning the war in terms of the overall reaction and there's been good volatility there's been a 15 point move off of a big gap down so there's volatility volatility like we said with Google tends to bring on more volatility so now that I've gotten a four point move off the high in just a matter of seconds now I'm looking to short new highs because I knew sellers came in right around 589 awful close to that 590 area so that starts giving me a reference point 589 590 you know somewhere in that range now I can short the stock also I've got the previous days low to think about as well to kind of guide this trade so I'll click play again and what you're gonna see is the stock recovers and kinda of continues to go straight up but that doesn't change the fact that it just made a four point move down and we know that sellers were able to come out the reason that four point move down is important is because it shows what's possible once the stock starts coming off the high 
if Amazon pulls back from the high and it only goes down one or two points, then I'm thinking, hey, this thing's remaining very strong and, you know, every single dip is getting bought. It's having a very hard time coming back down, but that wasn't the case. Amazon had a pretty easy time coming back down pretty quickly right there. Now we're going 83s. So now you're five points down off that most recent high. And again, psychologically, that's important because it shows me what Amazon is capable of when the tide does reverse, when the asks do take control of this. It's like when a quarterback has a great game and then his next game, he's not so great. Well, you're not that worried about him because you remember what he did the last game. And you think about that the next game before you bet against him. So in Amazon's case, she gave a great move off the high, a very quick move off the high. So if it makes a new high and then starts to stall out a little bit, I'm going to remember that, hey, last time she dropped five points in two minutes. So if she drops back from another high, I'm looking for, you know, again, five points, maybe four points at least. And that's what's ultimately going to set up the trade that you are about to see me start executing. Now, the one thing that's different about this trade on Amazon, as I jump to Tesla for some strange reason, um, is you're going to see me trade shares. You're going to see me trade shares on Amazon instead of options. The reason for that, again, is just my personal personality. I have seen the speed of the stock and it's very volatile and if I'm wrong I don't want to worry about losing 30 40 percent on an option if I'm wrong shares are gonna allow me to minimize my losses better somebody that wants to be more aggressive they're gonna buy puts in this type of trade so here we are so we're making a new high we're getting up towards that 590 level and I'm going to start scaling into some shorts. I think I do four share lots. I don't trade anything huge. I think it's like 10 to 15 shares or so maybe. We'll, we'll find out. I don't remember exactly. So here's the 590 cross. You can see I'm getting my order ready, watching that level two for a stall out. But I'm also willing to short into the push. As we get closer and closer to that previous day's low in the mid 590s, I'm going to start shorting. So I just shorted two shares at 590.75. You can see it highlighted. My average price, 590.75. I've only shorted two shares. Because of how volatile it is, I want to be open to shorting in a wider range. I just filled some more shares short. So now my average is 591.50. Because of how volatile it's been, I want to short into a wider range. All right, that right there, it just came away from 92 down to 90. I finally start to get a short signal here, like the last time when it backed away from 88. Watch this again. It comes above 92, but then it's going to come right back down to 90. Here's the 92 bids. Now watch what happens when the 92 bids get whacked out. Boom, right back down to 90. That's a signal that, okay, buying slowing down a little bit. We don't have as, we don't have huge support up here anymore, and now it's starting to reverse. Now we're getting a full-on high a day signal here, just like the last one. Quick three-point move off the high. You try and come back above 590. Let's see how it handles these bids. I'm surprised I'm not shorting more right here. Let's see if I do it. This looks like I get another order ready to short some more. So now you're back up on the highs. But again, I've still only got four shares short. I'm still scaling in here, going to short another two shares. I was very, very conservative with this, which is fine. I'm just kind of talking out loud. Remember, I'm trying to learn just as much as you guys are. So that right there, I like that right there. You again come up, try and make a new high, but 
get pulled back down below 590 very quickly. And I reiterate the speed, the speed, the speed, the speed. Those of you who have not traded earnings before, I remember my first couple times adjusting to the speed is so crucial. You need to be able to adjust to the speed. It's like watching a movie on fast forward. So now we're staying below 590. I guess I never did short more. I only got four shares, so that's kind of sad. I should have had more confidence here. Um, but at any rate, you know, the execution is what counts the most. And the key things here were waiting for that round level stall out. Sorry, waiting for the stall out off of the high of day. Waiting to observe that, remember when it dropped from 88 down to 83s, that was the signal that there was selling into the new high finally. And now I've got the round level reference point that I'm starting to short into in the 590s. So here's that, again, five point drop down. And you come down to 86. Now, the one thing I would point out, and I traded this incredibly small with only four shares, even with four shares short at 591.50, and you just printed 585s, you just printed 585.75, that's still just about a six-point move that I was able to catch. And I'm on bid right here. I just covered at 585.50. So I make six points on this trade, which is very good. I think to make six points on uh, on any trade, you know, at any time. But because of the speed and because of the volatility, I'm able to capture six points in a short period of time. And now you look, you're printing 84s. I could have gotten seven points. So again, just the takeaways: earnings, you're going to gap up, you're going to have major speed, and you're not going to have great reference points right away it's going to be a lot more about level two action unless like on the Google trade the Google trade was a much easier trade I would say the stock kind of goes sideways for you for a little while and you know gives you something some parameters to then really trade into the points I'm trying to make though is that level two level two level two is where you're going to identify a lot of those setups on earnings days. All right, this next one is from August 6th, 2015, last summer, and it's going to be a trade on Tesla. And again, earnings, check it out. The stock the day of earnings closed at 270 the next day it opened at 250 so a big time gap down now this is much later in the day this is 1050 this is 1050 uh, 1052 now I did not focus on Tesla at the open I watched it initially but it just kinda went straight down just like how we saw in the Amazon example how it went straight up off the gap down. Tesla initially tried to go up off the gap down and then just kind of flushed out. Went from 255 to 240. So after I saw that move, then I wanted to short a bounce on Tesla. And I knew that I wanted to short it somewhere where this move down had started. It went from like 248 down to 240 from about 945 to 10 o'clock. So now it's 10.52, hour and a half into the day just about. And check this out. One of my favorite setups you guys always hear me talk about. Multiple green candles in a row on a three-minute chart in the opposite direction of the primary trend, which sets up a trade. 
back in the primary direction. Tesla, primary direction on this day is down. We get multiple three minute green candles in the opposite direction of that primary trend. It starts coming back towards 47 to 48, which is where a lot of this selling started. So at this time of day, I have multiple reference points to set up my trade on Tesla, number one, and number two, I have one of my favorite setups in the form of that uh, multiple green candles in a row on a three minute chart in the opposite direction of what has been the primary trend on the day. So I'm gonna click play here, and it's just pretty simple. Stock comes up towards 47, as it does that, you're going to see me giving an eye on the 245s. Oh, nope, I guess it's the 24250 strike puts on the left-hand side here. So I jump into that one pretty quickly. Um, I want to rewind it here, see it again. Because I was looking at the 245, but I went with the 24250s. So you'll see it here in just a second again. This is August 6th. So here we are testing 46s. And again, I'm going with the 24250 strike puts on Tesla. And I get a bid in at $2.35 into this 47 approach. So I did buy one at $2.35, and I'm also prepared to buy another one if it goes lower. Now what I like about this trade is right away I place an ask at $2.70. You can't see it on here, but you, I know I did because the offer, the cancel offer button is highlighted. The other thing I like here is I'm getting ready to possibly buy another contract, kind of scale in, just like I scaled in or attempted to scale in on the Amazon short using shares. I'm ready to scale in on this Tesla short on these puts. What I like here is as we're testing 46, mid 46s, we keep coming back down on top of 46. And you're testing 46.50 here, keeps trying to come up near 47. Here's that 47 test, but right away back down to 46.50. Up towards 47 again. You've got a 10K bidder at 47. Fills him, whacks him out. Look how these asks are right on top of the bids. 46.59. This pisses me off when I jump over to Apple, but right back to Tesla right away, that's good. I just don't understand why I'm not keeping my focus on the trade I just entered, but that's another story for another day. And great down ticks right here. So that looks like a good solid stall out. Again, back to Apple, what the hell are you doing, bruh? Oh, I guess I was in a trade on Apple, so that's okay. I was doing two things at once. Anyways, so back down to 46. So now what I want to see, we've just backed away from 47s. Now I don't want to come back up to 47. Stalled out at that reference area. Now I want to get back below 46 and just start selling again. And pressure 245. 245 is the round level in this scenario. Nice wax right there, gets below 46. Notice how the asks have no problem coming below 46. Good stacking, 45.85 on the ask side. Forty-five seventy-three down ticking. Struggling to get back above 46, which I like. So if it does try to get back above 46, I want those asks to come right back down.
And again, our volume, our volume, 8.4 million shares. 8.4 million shares on Tesla the first hour and a half into the day. Tesla today on March 17, 2016, only traded 4 million shares. So already double the volume. And again, you only see that on earnings days for the most part. Everything's going to be faster. It's like the Super Bowl. Bigger, faster, stronger, more action generally. You can do really well on earnings days, but you can also do really bad if you're on the wrong side of things. Testing 45.50, ask stack right on top of 45.50 here. Good tight spread. I've got an ask placed at $2.70. You can see it highlighted in gray. Here it comes on ask at 270 on this breakdown back below 45. And I get filled at 270. Just a, just a good quick trade over on Tesla. So again, the same characteristics, the three main characteristics. The gap, the speed, and the follow through. Now you only saw me trade follow through action on Google, Amazon, and Tesla. You know, I didn't trade the first 30 minutes worth of price action, but Tesla gave great follow through on this day. When it made a new low, it was excellent follow through. So, you know, if I was being aggressive, I should have, could have, would have been all over that. And that, I can't stress it enough, is so important on earnings days getting that follow through all right I've showed you three winning trades here where it looks like I knew what I was doing at least to a certain extent so now let's show you a trade where I didn't know what I was doing and this is a perfect example of how earnings can mess with you so this is August 6, 2015. Oh, wait, that's not the right video. Sorry. What the hell is going on here? Sorry, technical difficulties, but I've figured out the issue. All right, I've got the right video here, finally. So this is July 16th, 2015. Let me turn it on HD. I know it's blurry right now, it's converting to HD. Okay, so this is the day that Netflix reported earnings. This is a Netflix earnings reaction. And I'll set this up again. So Netflix here, here's the gap. No surprise, we know that there's gaps on earnings days. Netflix is up 10% on this day. It is 18 minutes into the day. And on this particular day, Netflix has already traded 11 million shares. Today, on this day, March 17, 2016, Netflix traded 13.5 million shares total. So again, everything we talk about, gap, volume, and you're going to see speed here in a second, extremely over the top, always higher, always magnified, tremendous volume flow on an earnings day. Now. What I'm looking at here, Netflix is kind of tricky because it's gapped higher, but it's below the opening price, and it's just about testing lows for the day, and looks to kind of be in a little bit of a downtrend. But what happens 
is the stock starts to defend this low. And this is kind of the opposite of the Amazon example, where it gapped down big and then spiked higher. And I shorted the spike because I said that even though the bulls were winning the battle, the bears were still winning the war. This is the opposite effect. Netflix gaps up big, but starts downtrending from the open. So the bears are winning the battle, but the bulls are winning the war. So I click play here. And because of this, I'm leaning towards upside on Netflix because I figure in my head, hey, it's gapped up 10%. Yeah, it's coming a little bit, but it's starting to defend this low in the 107, high 107s, low 108 area. So you're going to see me look at some calls right here, 107.14 strike calls. They were weird strikes because Netflix had just done a split uh, a little while prior. But what I like here, and the reason I enter calls, is the stock starts to go in a little sideways pattern. You can't see it that great because I know it's a little blurry here. But we start to go a little sideways around 108. So when I see that sideways, after a down move within the context of a big gap higher, I start to think, OK, now it's going to resume the primary move, which the primary move had been to the upside. The reason I say that, even though the stock's below the open, is because it's still up 10% on the day. I can't yet say it's been a primary move to the downside. Now, if we make a new low, I want to pay close attention to what does that new low look like. We talk about follow through. So here's the new low, right? Check this out. Make a new low, but where's the follow through? Where's the immediate drop lower? Your low is 107.81. You just came below it, and we're still right here. Very different than the Google action. Very different than the Tesla action. So in this case, the lack of follow through to the downside after making a new low is what has me thinking about buying calls right here. Popping back above 108. So that, as soon as I see that, I place a bid to buy a call. I really like my idea right here. And that's just pure level two, seeing that there was a lack of follow through to the downside off that new low. Now, this is where it gets interesting for me, because remember, I told you this is going to be a trade where I kind of get chopped up on. So I buy the call at a buck 82. And you're still churning around 108. You start to bounce. I feel pretty good about this bounce that's starting. You come above 108, you can see right away I'm in a profitable position. I bought it at 182, and right away it's two bucks by 203. So I'm thinking, all right, here we go. But it starts to come back below 108, and that gets concerning for me. And I'm cautious to begin with, but on earnings days, I'm even more cautious because as we've seen in some of these examples, if you're wrong and you don't get out in time, the trade can go very far against you in a hurry. Somebody who's more aggressive maybe just accepts that and lets it play out. So I'm in this call. And if you start coming back below 108, I start to get a little concerned. But you're still defending it, so that's good. Now you get back below 108. Now you're starting to stack. So now right here I get a little nervous because I'm thinking, well, wait a second. I thought it was about to start bouncing. Now it's about to make a new low. And if you make a new low, I'm thinking, OK, and this time it might follow through. But back towards 108, so I'm still in. But trying to come back down on top of the low again. So here I'm on my toes. You can see I've got an order ready to exit at $1.60 at a small loss if it starts getting below that low. Because my whole idea 
behind the original entry is that it refused to continue to the downside. So now if it does start continuing to the downside, it starts to look like a primary move lower is starting. So far though, kind of decent. Comes back up towards 108. And again, this isn't chart stuff right here. This is just all level two trying to interpret the action. So that right there, I like that. You pop back above 108. Again, a lack of follow through to the downside off of that new low. But then you come back below 108. So here at this point, I'm starting to think in my head, you know what, maybe you're right, but maybe it's just not really doing anything and you're just not as sure of yourself the first time. I'm starting to lose confidence in this trade at this point because of the failure to hold 108. Granted, it's not flushing, but I'm nervous. So what do I do? I exit the trade at $1.63, so I take a little bit of a loss as it makes a new low because quite simply, I'm nervous. And this is where earnings can mess you up when, for me, you know, I do have a good entry, but was it confirmed that it was really starting to come back up? Not really. You know, I'm trying to time it. And in hindsight, as we continue to watch it here, I did time it well. But because I didn't wait for the solid holds above 108, because I chose to be more aggressive based on the lack of follow through lower, I've put myself in a more precarious position. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I need to get better at it in this instance. And the thing that you have to decide when you're going to make trades like this, and the thing I need to decide on my next one when I make a trade like this, is am I okay with the bigger than usual loss in order to get the bigger than usual gain? Because right here, Netflix is probably either going back up to 109 or it's probably about to start flushing at 106. I've exited because I'm too nervous. And... I take myself out of the trade because I say it's not worth it to take the bigger loss if it does go 106s. But in that line of thinking, when I reviewed this on film for myself, the question was, well, then why are you buying it there in the first place? You're trying to time the dead low. If you're going to try and do that, you know it's going to be more of a difficult trade. Because we know that when we buy at the, when we're trying to buy at the dead low, we're never going to know if it ends up being the dead low until it either ends up being the dead low or the stock just continues to get hammered and, you know, sells off and then we've got a 25, 35% loss because it wasn't the dead low. So it's a real fine line. And I wanted to show this one because it's an example where I was aggressive and I didn't manage that aggressiveness well. All right, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And now the stock my video paused on me. Okay, so here we are now. So now uh, six minutes later after my exit, Netflix has popped up to 109 and those calls have gone two dollars and fifty cents from my one dollar and eighty cent entry. So we're talking about a gain or a potential gain of just about 40% had I still been in this trade, but I wasn't. But the point that I want to make is this candle right here, that was kind of a confirmation candle of the bottom getting put in place. So I'm going to show it on level two. I wanted to jump ahead so you could already know what happened, but now let's look at level two and watch what it looked like because there's an opportunity for me to get back in this trade but I don't do it and the reason I don't do it I think looking back is because I felt like hey I had this trade correct and I just kinda of feel stupid for having exited and now I don't really want to buy back in higher than where it just was so right here this is where we start to break cleanly through some of these low 108s 
and this is where you know I can buy these calls back for two bucks my initial purchase was 180 but it doesn't look like I can get 180 again if I really want to get in I can do so all day right here at two bucks no questions asked I could have filled this position at two bucks very easily as the level two starts to firm up and move through the 108s but I'm kinda of gun shy now because I got the first one wrong well I didn't get it wrong I just didn't execute well enough and you know I again just don't want to buy it at these prices when in my eyes if I was still holding I would have been selling at these prices locking in profit but that's what the move looked like on level two and that's where earnings can mess with you a bit because that level two is so fast that sometimes it looks like it's breaking down sometimes it looks like looks like it's not breaking down and it speaks to that point that I said at the outset in general on earnings days I wait I wait and if you're gonna be aggressive and try and execute you need to decide you know what I'm just being aggressive I'm gonna accept a bigger loss if I'm wrong because I know it's gonna pay out if I'm right or you just don't even try and trade the first few minutes so just to recap here number one characteristic of an earnings day is going to be a big gap big gaps tend to take stocks to prices we haven't been to in a while sometimes they'll take them to a recent one week high or two week high or one week low or two week low but in most cases we tend to move to new one month lows or one month highs sometimes in extreme cases we make new yearly highs or new yearly lows so you're gonna have a bigger gap and that generally means that you're not as close to your reference points I'm always talking about the op uh, the previous day's high the previous day's low last week's high last week's low when you get a big gap you tend to get outside of those reference points and so because of that I personally like to wait until entering trades right away to allow myself some reference points to guide my trade number two is then when the market does open you're gonna have tremendous speed and tremendous volume and there's usually gonna be tremendous volatility number three when we make new highs or we make new lows or we get close to a reference point we need to observe follow-through or lack of follow-through we saw in Google the first example there was great follow-through to the upside that guided the trade that told me to stay in and I was able to get greater profits out of it we saw in Netflix there was a lack of follow-through to the downside when it was testing the low and that was my signal to get in the trade and look for a bounce it's not always follow-through but sometimes it can be a lack of follow-through that can set up the trade so those are your three things to watch for on earnings days gaps speed and follow through if you look out for those three things on the level two you'll be able to do all right it's not easy but I don't think it's as hard as people make it out to be as well so earnings about a month away Netflix will be the first major report coming up in early April and so hopefully this was good practice for you guys to see this was recorded it will be posted this weekend for your review and that's that are there any questions on anything you guys saw tonight All right, I'm not seeing any questions, so thank you guys for joining me tonight. I will see you tomorrow morning for our Friday session. Have a good night. Thanks.